What's going on, everybody? Mortem here, this time bringing you some news about upcoming games and announcements you might have missed over the past couple of weeks, as March has been so packed with game releases and, well, just announcements, really, that I haven't really had a chance to talk about too many of these in depth, so I figured today would be a good day to do a roundup of sorts on all of those ones that caught my eye in particular, because if you are not aware, much past roughly April, while there are a lot of games set to release this year, very little of them have release dates, so keeping an eye out for announcements for things like release dates has made up a not insignificant portion of my coverage of games this year, and that combined with a couple of new announcements makes up the bulk of this video. So first up, we have the exciting news of Outward 2's announcement, basically that it was a real thing that existed, but it looks to be carrying forward the original game's style and premise and simply adding more onto it, which I always think is great for a sequel, and for those who are unaware where Outward, and thus Outward 2, is a game with a big focus on survival, but also regular old RPG mechanics like diving fully into a very specific character build on top of a really deep and intricate magic system that involved comboing a bunch of spells together to produce new effects, and Outward was a very unique game that got a bit of a cult following. Sales-wise, I think it actually wound up doing a million over the course of its time, and while it's certainly not a game for everybody, the people who enjoyed it really enjoyed it. It. For me, it took like, I would say, five or six hours with the first one before it really clicked and I started enjoying myself, if that gives you any indication. But Outward 2 seems to be trying to improve on everything the original did while keeping the core of it. So that same survival experience, but with better features like voice acting, new weapons, abilities, etc. In particular, though, this one will take place 50 years after the original and integrate a lot of what happened in the original game into the sequel, which will be interesting to see, especially if you played through all the details. DLCs. But while it took some getting into, I did wind up really enjoying Outward, so I'm excited for a sequel, and I'll definitely be covering that one, though unfortunately, unlike everything else on this list, we don't even have a release window for this one, which means it's probably not coming this year, but nonetheless, a cool announcement that I wanted to share. Now, next up, though, we have something that we don't have to wait too long for at all, as it is entering early access on April 18th, and this is No Rest for the Wicked, a blending of ARPG and Dark Souls mechanics, or Souls-likes if you will, which is interesting because I've seen ARPGs and isometric games play around with that concept before, and they haven't exactly met with a lot of success, but No Rest for the Wicked, at least at first glance, seems to be on track to actually pull it off. Initially announced just a few months ago, it got a bit of an info dump here recently. They had a big sort of deep dive on March 1st, and then more recently they gave the game to content creators and news outlets to play and make videos on so you can actually go watch a bunch of full-on gameplay ahead of its early access release that is just around the corner. So you don't have to just take my word for it. But for me, this game is visually incredibly striking. I also just love ARPGs, so I'm always down for that. And from what I've seen of the gameplay, all of the combat looks incredibly weighty and basically what you would want from an isometric Dark Souls if that's your thing. So while I think the audience for this may wind up being a little bit niche or perhaps even spread the love of Souls likes to other people. We'll simply have to wait and see. Ultimately, though, I love everything this game is trying to do, and I'll be jumping into the early access to, of course, provide some feedback and share my experiences with you, of course. But mostly, I'm just really curious to see if they can pull this blend of mechanics off, because again, I've seen games try this and flounder pretty hard. Though that brings us to our third game here with Greedfall 2, an anticipated sequel for a well-received title, Greedfall, obviously. Greedfall 2 is going to take place a couple of years before the original, and is a bit of a role reversal from the first one. This time we'll be playing a native of Tier for D, a legendary island that was recently discovered who finds their way to the mainland in the midst of the Malachor Plague. This game is being developed by Spiders, the developer, and they have a very, I would say, particular game style. It's almost like old school Bioware in a lot of ways, and most of their games have been janky but very fun. Greedfall was a big step up for them. It was easily their best-selling game, and it had a lot of good things going for it. So Greedfall 2 is hopefully going to refine and improve on a lot of those systems, which I would assume is why they probably chose to put the game into early access later this summer, though no exact date. Now, they are not typically a studio who has done early access in the past, so the decision to do so is hopefully going to be to the benefit of this game. And given their pretty reliable nature as a game developer in terms of releases and actually bringing products to bear, I'm not too worried about 
about an early access release, but I am curious to see what, if anything, they wind up changing or if it's just going to be bug fixing and polish, that kind of thing. Now, this is the only game on this list I've spoken about previously at length, so I won't bore everyone with the details too much, but either way, I'm looking forward to it. And I hope this one really sees Spiders continue to evolve as a developer. Fourth on the list, we have a very interesting recently announced title via The Sinking City 2. Follow-up, of course, to The Sinking City, a detective horror-esque game kind of just to the side of Cthulhu mythos type stuff where you had to run around the sinking city solving cases. But shortly after that game was released, it ran into all sorts of legal trouble with its publisher, with Frogwares, the developer, only rather recently actually fully resolving those disputes and earning the right to all the publishing rights for the game. For a long time there, you couldn't even buy the original. But all of that seems to be sorted out and Frogwares is looking towards the future and with The Sinking City 2, they plan on moving away from the detective side of things and going full-on survival horror, which I think suits a universe like this decently well, though obviously we have to wait and see how this one pans out. Quite a while in comparison to everything else on this list, as this one is slated for 2025, but with this game's announcement, they also announced that they are planning on doing a Kickstarter to help fund this game, which isn't terribly surprising as I believe they're pretty much an indie studio at this point. So I think whether or not we actually wind up seeing this game released is definitely up in the air, but it seems like an interesting premise after a very tumultuous few years for the developer, which is honestly a giant understatement. But nonetheless, that brings us to our final entry, Unknown Nine Awakening. What appears to be a fun action adventure focusing on either stealth or more combat forward gameplay in an interesting universe. Now, Unknown 9 is what they're calling the world, but it basically looks to be a modern day setting where there is an adjacent universe called the Fold that can sometimes be harnessed to give certain people or individuals who can manifest it special powers or basically magic. It makes these people wizards in the modern day, to put it very simply. Now, my understanding is that the Unknown 9 is an established world that's already had like novels and comics and stuff written about it, but it's the first foray they're making into video games with it, and they're hoping it goes well so they can do even more, so obviously we'll see on that front, but this game in particular is going to put us in the role of Haruna, a young woman who just happens to have access to the Fold, which we're going to be utilizing across a bit of a world-spanning adventure with game locations such as India, where Haruna's from, and then places like Portugal are mentioned, and across those locations we're going to be up against a secret society known as the Ascendants who would like to use the Fold to their own ends, more specifically to control humanity's growth and progress, sort of like Illuminati adjacent, basically. But for this game, both the stealth and the powers look pretty fun. There's things that will let you possess enemies and utilize their weapons against their friends, alongside a bunch of telekinetic powers on display, so it looks like it has the potential to be fun, and we don't have to wait too long for this one, as they are targeting a summer 2024 release window. So theoretically, we should see this one in a few months, but again, no official release date. So that is pretty much all I've got for you guys today, just rounding up some news and announcements about things I thought were interesting, things I will almost certainly be making videos about. And with any luck, hopefully some of this is news to you, at least one or two if I did my job correctly. But whether you are aware of all of them or just finding out about some of them, I'd love to hear about what you think about these titles down in the comment section below, which of course means to like, comment, subscribe, all that YouTube jazz. But regardless of any of that, truly, just thank you so much for watching. I really do appreciate it. May you wander in wisdom and have an amazing day.